Hendricks. I'm the project lead for DSIP Router. Today we're going to talk about how to connect DSIP Router to Twilio. So um, if you look at DSIP Router, uh, like a default install, you'll notice that in the carrier groups, which in DSIP Router is how you connect to upstream carriers, uh, there's already a Twilio North American uh, carrier group. And that carrier group is uh, really contains all of the endpoints where calls can um, where signaling can come from the Twilio platform. So with these IPs being here, this means that the decent router will allow traffic inbound uh, into uh, into uh, from from Twilio. So um, we're going to leave this particular carrier group the way it is because this is really for accepting inbound traffic. Uh, and we're going to create a new carrier group uh, for um, for sending traffic outbound to Twilio. But before we do that, let's jump over to the Twilio console and let's configure up the elastic SIP trunking. So um, if uh, you log into Twilio, uh, Twilio has a number of services, uh, but we're going to be in the super network section under elastic SIP trunking. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on trunks and we're going to say create a new SIP trunk. We're going to give it a little friendly name. We're going to call it DSIP router test. And we're going to keep all of the default configuration the same. On the general settings, we're going to focus on uh, termination. So termination is traffic coming from um, from from Twilio. I'm sorry, from uh, DSIP router to Twilio. So terminating at Twilio. So the first thing is uh, you need to understand is that you can't just um, signal or route calls to uh, the Twilio platform leveraging the Twilio uh, IPs. You actually need to use a termination SIP URI that is based on a DNS name. Uh, that's how Twilio knows how to build your account uh, and, uh, and that's the only way it will route the traffic. If you try and send it via IPs, it will not work. So let's go ahead and create a unique termination SIP URL. So we're gonna call this the SIP router test. Uh, let's make sure this is available, yes. And then we're gonna be using IP authentication. So these are the, uh, the IPs that traffic will be coming from. So let's go ahead and I have a few of these here. Um, so let's go ahead and create this here. We're gonna call it uh, okay. And we're going to grab the IP address of D sub router. And we're going to give it a, uh, it needs a CIDR, so 32 bit, create ACL. All right, so that's there. We're going to keep everything being this, all the settings. You're going to take the defaults um, here. And very important is that you need to save here. Uh, otherwise, uh, things won't, won't work. <laughs> uh, and I, I've, that's happened to me multiple times. Like I can figure this and I think that it's auto saving, but it's not. So you need to actually save it here. All right, so we're gonna grab the uh, termination SIP URI um, and we're gonna go back over to our DSIP router carrier groups. So let's go ahead and create a new, um, a new carrier group. We're gonna call it Twilio Outbound. Click Add. and go to endpoints and we're going to put in this is our DSIP router test um, and 
the IP address that we're going to pin in, the host name we're going to pin in. Remember, no IP address has to be host name. Is going to be decent router test pstn.twilio.com. Let's just validate that and fat finger that pstn.twilio.com and decent router test. Perfect. All right. So we're going to add that. So now this is uh, configured. Now we need to be able to, to, to test an outbound call. Well, in order to test outbound call, we need to use maybe, what I typically use is my SIP client um, versus like, I usually use my SIP client, um, which will connect to DSIP router, which will send a call to DSIP router, and DSIP router will then send it to Twilio. Um, once I know that's working, then I'll say, okay, now I want to connect my media server to DSIP router, right? And that way I don't have to try and troubleshoot everything from the media server all the way to Twilio. I am just starting with like this, my basic SIP client um, connecting to DSIP router. So that's what I usually do. So that's what we'll, we'll do here. I'm going to going to say just my test uh, UA, user agent. Um, I'm going to use IP off. And this is the IP address that my SIP client is going to come from. I'm just going to save that, um, add this. And now we're going to do a reload. And um, great, Camellio was reloaded. Let's go ahead and do a couple of things. Here is my um, DSIP router uh, instance using SNGREP. And all we need now is a SIP client. And let's... Uh, Glab Zoipier. Okay. And I already have a profile set up. I'll just have to change the IP address here. Remember, it doesn't really matter what the username is in this case. Um, as long as it is a, a phone number, a 10 digit number, that's going to be the, the from number that's going to show up when making the call. And then the domain is just going to be the IP address of the DSIP router instance. So again, we are sending a call to DSIP router. We don't need to register because we're using IP off. So this is how I use, this is how I do IP off testing <laughs> using Zoipier. I just don't register. I put an IP address. So now I'm going to send a call. Um, so Twilio likes it in the E164 format. So I'm going to call our office, 1-888-907-2085. And let's see what happens. Look at that. It's calling. Oh, so. It seems like it's sending a call to here, but it's not getting a response back. Um, not sure. Oh, I know why. You know why, guys? We forgot to do one last thing. We need to change the outbound route. The default outbound route for uh, DSA router is uh, Skytail. Uh, so what we're going to do here is change our default route to our Twilio outbound. That is better. So I love live demos. This is why we do it. All right, so now that that is there, let's try it again. So we're gonna do the plus one, 888-907-2085. All right, and let's give it another try. Oh, let's grab our, our SIP client here. And let's, and let's clear it and see what happens um, now. And uh, let's make sure we have uh, audio here. Okay, well, this is, this is okay, I guess. All right, we'll see what happens here. All right, so it actually uh, told me that it was diverted. So that means most likely there's some issue or message that came back from, um, from Twilio. So what I find in a lot of cases here is that on SNGREP, whenever I look at a diverted call, oh, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so it worked this time. 
All right, so all right, what is what is uh, what is Twilio saying? They're saying the caller ID is unverified. SIP trunk and terminate calls penis must have a valid caller ID in the phone field. All right, so it has not validated that caller ID. So let's go look at Twilio and see what number is validated, and then from there we can um, we can use that number. Maybe we have numbers. We don't have a number here. So we'll just, uh, we can either validate a number or we'll get a number. In this case, we'll go ahead and we'll just grab a number. Oh man, so I have that. So trial numbers can't be provisioned to an upgraded account. All right, so let's, can I buy a number? Yes, okay. And let's go ahead and grab a number. I live in Detroit, so we're going to grab a number from Detroit here. So we'll just grab this number here. So let's just grab that. Okay. And okay. Yep. Perfect. So, and the only other number here, so I'll, I'll check my, my I'll check um, the number I just bought. I'll put that in there. Otherwise, I'll use this, the verified, uh, one of the verified numbers that I have here. So let's go and go to my SIP client and let's, Change this out. Okay. All right. So now, let's do that. And do plus one, eight, 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 nine, oh, seven, two, zero, eight, five. All right, and then let's grab another one of these and uh, let's let's go. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Thank you for calling the open source. There it is. By enterprise grade support and consulting for Linux and open source voice over IP software. Oh, wait a minute. Let me make sure. I don't think we went through the right one. So here, let me do it again. Uh, for some reason, I think it hit another another system. So let me go and do it again. Okay, there it goes. All right, we're still having problems. Let's go see what the issue is. And let's go make sure I think it may want a one here, so let's go see. And let's try this again. Ah. Thank you for calling the open source. That was it. We provide enterprise grade support and consulting for Linux and open source voice over IP software such as Asterix, Free PBS, Free Switch, or All right. So so what we've done here, um, just as a recap, is we set up a carrier group called Twilio Outbound. And uh, we, we specified the actual termination SIP URI that we defined inside the Twilio console. Um, in the Twilio console, what we've done is a couple of things. Um, so um, under the super network elastic SIP trunking, we created a 
Trump called decent router test. Um, the only thing we really changed, uh, well, two things we actually specified. One, we, we created a unique termination SIP URI, right, which I just showed you in the what we use inside of decent router, and we define a IP access control list. So that means that um, this means that this allows um, a decent router to be able to send traffic to, to Twilio. Um, and then what we had to do is, uh, well, Twilio requires that the caller ID either be a number that was purchased from Twilio or a verified uh, caller ID, a verified caller ID. So what I did was uh, went to numbers and I actually purchased a, a new number, right? So, uh, and this is the, the number that I actually purchased. Actually, I had another one already. I could have used that one. But um, this, I purchased a number and then I used that number as the, as the caller ID. The other approach that I could have did is that I could have uh, verified a caller ID um, and they have a verif verification mechanism where I can verify a number, but I just took the simple route and just quickly created a, a phone number. And then from there, uh, we did a outbound call, right? So it took us a little bit to get that going, but I think it's always um, more, um, it's more educational to actually go through and troubleshoot issues versus you seeing a video and everything is perfect because in reality, things aren't always perfect the first time. So thank you for watching this video. If you like our videos and you want us to um, continue creating these educational videos, please click the subscribe button and, uh, and like the video. Thank you and we'll talk to you soon.